Hey everyone! Today I'm going to show you how to make a simple nightgown for your stuffed animal. A few people requested this after my pajama video, so let's get started! Here is the fabric I'm going to use. It feels like silk and these pieces were actually cut off from pajama pants because they needed to be shortened, so this is the perfect material to make a nightgown. You can use any kind of fabric you want though, I just think a silky material just reminds me of nightgowns and of course the shooting star pattern helps. Speaking of patterns, I'm going to use these ones I made to cut out my pieces. I'll also link them in the description box. You can just pin the patterns on and cut them out with scissors, which is what I normally do, but I got a new blade for my rotary cutter so I'm going to use that. And instead of pinning them on, I'm going to add some paints on top to weigh down the pattern and that saves me some time. This first pattern I used is only a half pattern because it's so long, so I had to cut it out in two pieces since my fabric wasn't long enough. And for the sleeves, which are these smaller rectangles, I'm going to need two. After cutting out all my pieces, I still have to sew together my big rectangle because my fabric wasn't long enough, so I'm going to do that real quick. Just something to note when working with silk is as you sew, you want to pull on the silk from both sides of the machine so it's taut, and that way you won't get any waviness like I got here. Then I'm going to hem the bottoms of each rectangle. Since silk frays a lot, I'm folding the bottom edge over twice so the fray is invisible, and then I'm pinning it down to hold it in place. If you are using silk for this, make sure to first pin on a scrap piece to see if it leaves permanent holes in it, which happens with some silk, so in that case you'd have to use special silk pins, but if it doesn't, like mine, you can just use normal pins. I'm also hemming these smaller rectangles, and I'm using a straight stitch to sew these in place. After that, I can set the sleeves aside and now hem the top of the main dress piece. I want this fold to be a little bigger so it can fit my elastic. I meant to fold it over twice again, first a small fold, then a big one, but when making the pattern I made it a little too short, so to save a little length, I'm just folding it over once. I did make it a little longer for the printable patterns though, so you shouldn't have to worry about that. Right now I'm continuing to fold over the top edge all the way down, and then I'm sewing it in place with a straight stitch. After that, I can grab my elastic, which is cut to about 15 inches long, but you can measure around your stuffed animal to find the right length. And I'm using this really thin one since I had it, but any size will work. I'm attaching a safety pin to the end to make it easier to move through. If you have any seams where you had to sew two pieces together, like right here, it's important to feed the elastic through in the same direction that the seam is laying, so I'm going to be going to the right, because sometimes if you go in the other direction, the safety pin gets caught in the excess fabric. So now I'm just feeding the elastic through, gathering the fabric around the safety pin, and then pulling it down. And make sure to either hold onto or pin down the other end, because if it gets sucked inside, you have to start all over, which is what I ended up having to do later. Once the elastic is to the other side, I'm pinning the ends together with the safety pin for now. Next, I'm folding the whole thing in half, good side to good side, and lining up the edges, so I can pin and sew them together with a straight stitch. It's good to pull your elastic out kind of a lot to make sure it gets sewn in there. After that, since there was a lot of fraying, I did a little zigzag stitch along the raw edges to prevent any more fraying, and trimmed off the thread sticking out. Now the main part of the dress is done, so I can get back to the sleeves. I next need to hem the top edges, and I only folded it over once to save length again, but I would have preferred to fold it over twice. The one thing I'm going to do differently when hemming this is I'm not going to lock my stitch in the beginning, so I'm not going to do a back stitch at any point until the very end. Even if you mess up, just keep sewing and you can fix it later. You could also lock your stitch in the beginning and not lock the end, but I like to just do it in the beginning so I don't forget. I need to do that for both sleeves. After that, they'll look like this, and I left the side I didn't lock with a very long tail so I can grab one of the threads and just lightly pull on it until the material gathers, and once that happens, I'm going to push the ruffles down to the other end to spread them out. As I keep doing this, the top of the sleeve will start getting smaller and smaller, so you want to stop when it's a little longer than the measurement around your stuffed animal's arms. Mine was around 6 inches, so you can see me measuring it here. Once it's to the right length, I'm taking the ends of the thread, one is going to be really long, and tying them in a knot 2 or 3 times to lock in the ruffles. After doing that to the other one, I can fold them in half good side to good side and pin together the edges like I did for the dress and close them up using a straight stitch. Instead of just using the thread to gather the material, you could use the same technique as for the dress and use an elastic. That way the sleeves can stretch around your stuffed animal's arms and probably fit other stuffed animals. 
After closing up the sleeves, I also did a zigzag stitch on the edges, and now all the components of this nightgown are finished. The last thing to do is sew the sleeves onto the dress, which is optional, but I didn't want to accidentally lose the sleeves. To make sure I get the right placement, I'm trying it on my stuffed animal first. I made this for Chelsea, but it also fits a Build-A-Bear. And since you can't really see the outline of the nightgown on Chelsea's fur, I later tried it on someone else. But now I can grab a needle and thread and enter through the inside of the nightgown, and just do a few stitches through the bottom of the sleeves to connect them. And before doing this, you want to make sure the best sides of the dress and sleeves are facing forward because you can't rotate the sleeves after sewing them on, so you probably don't want the seam visible in the front. After sewing through both the sleeves and the dress a few times, I can tie off my thread and sew on the other sleeve. This is a lot easier to do when the nightgown's off the stuffed animal, so I finally took it off for the second one. And after that, this nightgown is done! I'm going to try it on Coco here so it doesn't blend in as much. You can pull the sleeves all the way up like I did, or you can have them wear it off the shoulder. I know it might not be super obvious that this is a nightgown, it does look like it could just be a normal dress, but I think you can really sell it with the kind of fabric you use and the print. There's probably a lot of nursery flannel that would look great too. For me, it was just a bonus that I could use this scrap fabric originally from pajamas. I really hope you found this video helpful. Please give it a like, comment any video requests you have, and subscribe if you haven't already. I'll see you next time. Bye!